Hello, welcome back to Zima Redesign T-Shirt Quilt Tutorial Part 3. I am quilting on a Bernina 880 Plus using my BSR foot, my Bernina Stitch Regulator foot. So you'll need a free motion foot and you'll need to drop your feed dogs to free motion. So I'm, I'll be using a ballpoint needle 1490 uh, for this project. So I first I lower my presser foot and I lower my needle to bring up my bobbin thread just to keep it from tangling on the back. I use my tweezers to grasp and pull it up. I take the bobbin thread and the top thread and I pull them to the side holding it with my hand and I take a few stitches in place um, just to lock those stitches in to begin my meander or my stippling stitch. So I place both hands on opposite sides of the needle spreading my fingers as far apart as I can and with my quilting gloves on it makes it uh, the quilt easier to move around. So my quilt is folded under, under the throat of the machine and behind the machine. And then the other part is just lying in my lap. So when you're quilting, just concentrate on a small section at a time. It'll just help to keep you from being overwhelmed. So we had used our pins to base the quilt. So use your, uh, your scissors just to lift up the uh, end of that pin and it'll come out a lot easier. I usually don't take my pins out. I just usually go around them. Um, as I'm quilting and take them out um, at the end. I begin quilting in the center of the quilt and I quilt out horizontally and quilt out vertically. And you'll see now this is what the meandering stitch, this is what it looks like. I quilted it quite densely. I didn't intend to quilt it densely. I think next time I'll make sure to quilt it a little bit further apart. But when you're meandering or stippling, just try not to cross over your stitches, but if you do, it's okay. Just adds a little charm to the quilt. Make sure that when you're quilting and you need to move your hands that you stop the machine, stop quilting, move your hands and then take a few stitches and then just continue. I don't like to meander or stitch over that plastic imaging or letters because it'll make holes in that, in that leather, um, in that plastic there, the lettering. I just usually just uh, go around those. So, um, to keep the t-shirts from shifting, you can also use a fusible uh, batting as well. So once it's quilted all over, as you see, then it'll be time for us to trim up the quilt. So you get your rotary cutter, your ruler, and your mat, and you'll line up the quilt at the top of, uh, of one of the corners and at the side, just to make sure that the top and the sides that, that it's square, and you'll make your first cut there and you use this as your guide to trim around the entire part of the quilt and you just continue to um, move your ruler measuring from this first line. So since I had t-shirts on the back I had to turn the quilt over and um, square it up from the back as well because my t-shirts shifted a little on the back too so um, I didn't lose any of my imaging because my image was uh, in the center so I didn't lose a lot of that so it was okay. So next we're going to start to create our binding and I'm going to cut my binding two and a half inch strips and uh, this is my sample fabric and um, I'll be using some maroon and black stri uh, strips but, um, but I'll use this as my sample. So I'll measure from the bottom fold and I'll measure two and a half inches and I'm cutting them the length of the selvage. I'm going to cut them on the grain. That'll just help to keep it from um, shifting and stretching. You can also cut them on the cross grain. It's okay. Um, but it'll, it'll, it will um, stretch, have a little more stretch to it. But I cut several two and a half inch strips the width of the fabric. And I usually like to combine um, several different um, fabrics together to create my bindings, especially for t-shirt quilts, because it just adds more character to the quilt. And they're two and a half inch strips. And we will connect them together, we'll um, sew them together to make one long continuous strip. So after we have our strips cut and we're ready to lay them together, we're going to have several strips. So these are two. 
uh, that we're gonna use as a sample to show you how to connect them together. So you're gonna lay one strip down right side up and you're gonna lay it down vertically. You're gonna take your second strip and you're gonna lay, lay it right sides down. So right sides facing and you're gonna lay it down horizontally. You're gonna mark a line from the vertical corner to the vertical corner. So the bottom strip corner to the top of the bottom strip corner, so vertically. So with your ruler, you're gonna lay it down and you're going to mark And this is your sewing line. I usually pin my strips before I move them to the machine just to keep them from, uh, from, from moving around and I just make sure that it is um, accurate when I get to the sewing machine. And we have our sewing line and I pin uh, one on each side of that sewing line. Move to the sewing machine and I'm going to make sure to backstitch at the beginning and backstitch at the end. Then when you fold your top strip up, you'll see that it's mitered. So you'll cut off the excess fabric, leaving a quarter inch seam allowance. And we have our mitered um, binding strip. And you'll just continue to do this process until all of your strips are sewn together to, cre to create one continuous binding strip. So you'll fold it over raw edges meeting and you'll press, that's your raw edge, and then the other side is folded. So I'm going to lay my binding strip um, around my quilt just to make sure that I have enough. I leave a little bit extra in all four of the corners just because that's where you're going to use to miter those corners. And so you have that extra uh, binding strip there. You see we have quite a bit extra. So next week I'll show you another project to use that. So I usually wind it around my hand, uh, just like you're winding a ball of yarn, just to make it easier to transport it to the machine, to the sewing machine. And don't worry about having too much. We're gonna use um, upcycle that. So when we're ready to attach it to the quilt, I go to the, uh, usually start at the bottom side of the quilt and I leave a 10 inch long tail that I don't pin, but I begin pinning and I uh, pin all the way down to a quarter inch where the pin is there. I stop sewing at that quarter inch mark at the end. So I back stitch at the front and then I backstitch at that end of that quarter inch mark. And sometimes I even angle off um, to the angle of the quilt, of that binding strip. So now to miter it, you're going to fold this strip up vertically away from the quilt, creating a fold. You're going to fold it back down on itself toward vertically, but you're gonna fold it toward the quilt and then put a pin there and this will help um, to create that miter. And then just continue to pin in place and sewing with a quarter inch seam allowance. This is how you're going to attach the entire part of the quilt, the uh, binding strip. So you're gonna backstitch at the end, just like we backstitched at the beginning. And you see you have your 10 inch tail of the black strip. You're gonna fold that maroon strip until it meets the end of the black strip. And then we're going to make a mark um, at, at that fold of that maroon strip. This is how we're going to create our uh, miter. And you've, you've left a 10 inch long piece there that is um, unpinned. That way it'll give you lots of room. So the first thing you're gonna do is cut, give yourself quite a bit of, of, of room there and trim the uh, rest of your, your binding strip off. So you see we have it marked where it meets the black strip. You're going to unfold 
that maroon fabric and we're going to begin laying it out to miter it just like we did those other continuous strips. You're going to lay it out vertically and you're going to take your black strip, unfold it, and you're going to lay it out horizontally above that marked line. You're going to, once again, from vertical corner to vertical corner, you're going to mark your sewing line. Before lifting it up to take it to the machine, you're going to pin. I kind of overdid it with the pins there, but I made sure that it's not moving. You're going to pin, and then you're going to back stitch at the beginning and back stitch at the end to connect those two strips. So just test out to make sure that all of your measurements were correct, and you should have a continuous binding strip that um, goes the rest of the length of your quilt. Trim off your excess. A quarter inch seam allowance. You can finger press it at this point, pin it in place, and then just continue your sewing, your continuous binding strip. So once it's all sewn, you're going to now um, trim those seam allowances. You're going to trim all four corners. Making sure though not to cut through your stitching, but cutting through your corners, as well as uh, trimming all, all of the seam allowances all the way around to about maybe an uh, eighth of an inch. Then you're going to fold over your binding strip to the back of the quilt. You're gonna fold it over. It'll make it a lot easier when you trim those seam allowances. Fold it over with your binding clips or your uh, safety or your pins, your straight pins. Then I usually do a hand stitch at this point. So you'll see it's all folded over and I'm pinning it in place. And since we trimmed those corners and we stopped the, the sewing a quarter of an inch from the end of the binding strip in those corners, it'll make it easier for you to fold it over and create a fold in one side, fold over the other side, creating your miter corner. put a pin there and we're going to hand stitch. I usually use a uh, whip stitch or a slip stitch. Uh, you can use a blanket stitch if you like. And just hand stitch all the way around your binding strip until it's all done. At this point your t-shirt quilt is complete. But I thought it needed a little added detail, so I added a blanket stitch a sewing uh, on, from the sewing machine. And I, I added a blanket stitch just to add a little bit more detail. But your t-shirt quilt is all done. It's warm, it's functional, and it'll provide you with lots of memories for a long time. So next week, I'll show you a project of uh, to use those leftover binding strips, so we'll upcycle those as well. It's really nice to have the t-shirts on the front and then have your backing as t-shirts because you can use any images that you have at the back of the t-shirts as well. And it just makes it more durable. You see there's a blank spot there in the back of the quilt. That's one of those images that had uh, that plastic that I didn't sew over, but it's okay. It'll still wash really well because there's so much of the stitching on the quilt. So all of those memories. I hope you like it. Thanks for watching.